Everybody's going for a white and out background. Where's the diversity? Right here. I've never understood why pundits make predictions about who's going to place where before the season's even started. So I'll put it three weeks. It's bad enough. Without further ado, here are my predictions for the Premier League 2012-13. To win the Premier League and call themselves champions, I'm backing Manchester United. Now, I'll accept accusations of bias on this one, but look at the facts. As I said last week, Alex Ferguson now has four strikers at his disposal. Wayne Rooney is due back at the end of the month, and provided his fitness gets where it needs to be, Fergie's strike force will come into full effect around the time of the New Year's running, which is crucial for any team. Players such as Ryan Giggs have said that the addition of Robin Van Persie is going to make all the difference when it comes to the title running, especially in terms of the amount of goals scored. High praise indeed, but given his performance against Southampton, it's praise that's richly deserved. What missed penalty? To be runners-up, I've gone for Chelsea. Now, a lot of people have picked Manchester City for this position, but I think based on their signings, it's going to be the Blues who get it. They've made really positive strides to improve on what was a really disappointing league position for them last year. Their signings, by the way, which include Eden Bloody Hazard for everyone who complained that I left him out last week. And while we're on the topic of him, I'd like to express my amusement slash annoyance with the way that everyone is pronouncing his name now. We spent the whole summer, the whole soap opera saga, calling him Eden Hazard. And then all of a sudden he gets onto a pitch and Jonathan Pierce is going, Hazard. Make your mind up, whichever one it is, stick to it. Ask him, I'm sure he knows. But I am not having another nanny nani situation, not on my watch. The team seemed together, Fernando Torres seems to have got his drive back, and Di Matteo proved himself to be a very competent manager at the end of last season, driving them to Champions League glory. I mean, heck, they've picked up maximum points so far, and aside from an embarrassing defeat to Atletico Madrid, they've done really well. I think they're going to go so far but they're not quite going to get there. Moving on, it's often said that it's tough to win the Premier League trophy, but it's even tougher to keep it, and I think Man City are going to learn that the hard way this year and place third. They had a phenomenal season last year, and as much as I hate to admit it, they were amazing. This year their team remains largely unchanged, and I actually think that's what's going to go against them. There's no freshness, and the signings that they've brought in don't jump out to you as astounding. There's no Aguero, for example, who's going to come in and take the front line by storm. I reckon they're going to have a much better European season than they did last year, but I think that's going to come at the detriment to their league form. Give it two, maybe three years, and they'll find the right balance, but sadly not this year. And after a bizarre last season and a transitional summer, I think this Arsenal squad with its fledgling strike force is going to come good and claim fourth. In previous years, the relegation battle has proved to be just as, if not more, exciting than that at the top, and this year doesn't look to be any different. I think there's going to be about five, maybe even six teams battling for survival come May, and I really think it's going to go right down to the wire. This is the awkward bit where I have to pick who's going to be relegated, and if I pick your team, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I might be wrong. Probably not wrong. The first team I'm going to pick to be relegated is QPR. The R's have made some really positive moves in the transfer window, and they've got great backing in Tony Fernandez, but I just don't think that's going to be enough. The team just aren't together enough for me. It's all well and good spending a load and bringing a lot of experience in, but the team need to gel, and I don't think that's happening for Mark Hughes at the moment. I really don't want it to happen, but I think that it will. Sorry. The second team I'm picking for the drop is going to be Reading. Reading have so far passed under my radar a bit, and I know that's probably because they had three games in really quick succession followed by a week off, but still, it's never really a good sign. I'm not picking them because I think they're weak. I don't think any team in the Premier League is weak, per se. I just think they're going to have the most trouble staying up. As for the final relegation, team, I've spent ages going back and forth in my head between Aston Villa and Wigan. Villa because, again, they're under my radar and I don't feel like there's a lot of passion and when that's gone, you're in trouble. And Wigan because they've only barely avoided the drop the last two seasons and seeing the quality of the teams at the top of the Premier League this year, I don't think Roberto Martinez has another escaping act in him. I can't decide between the two, so I'm going to flip a coin. Here we go. Okay, Aston Villa are heads because Aston Villa have heads and Wigan are tails because that's what's left. Here we go. again. This was a bad idea. Sorry Aston Villa, it's heads. The fates have decided. Bye! So those are my predictions for the coming year in English football. At the end of the season I'll re-watch this video and deconstruct it and we'll see how I did. It's either going to be hilariously inaccurate or spooky as hell. Next weekend I'm heading to Craven Cottage to see Fulham play West Brom live and I'm hideously excited. So that's my match pick for the weekend, if only because there's the tiniest chance I might be in a crowd shot on match the day. <laughs> Come back next week to see how it went and I'll give a review of the stadium and the match day itself. If you're going to be at Craven Cottage, come say hey, I'll be at the Putney end. To be honest, I just can't wait to see the Michael Jackson statue and see how much it doesn't look like Michael Jackson. Until then, I'm Daniel J. Layton vlogging for GBposters.com. 
Bye for now. Go on, Miles. Head over to the GB posters. They sell posters and other things. Uh, and it's good. So good. It's like a modern day Shakespeare. Only less good. <laughs>